Hi, I'm Graham Blackburn, and in this episode of Traditional Woodworking by Hand, we're going to be talking about the most traditional tool of all, one that was first noticed 300,000 years ago. You know, sometimes, no matter how well tuned your plane may be, you find yourself planing a piece of wood and whatever you do, you end up getting tear out. Now we've talked about how to avoid that before by tuning the plane and remouthing the plane, but sometimes you don't need to go to such lengths. You can solve the problem by using a scraper. Now we have scrapers in museums that date all the way back to the end of the last Stone Age. 300,000 years people have been using for tools. We still make them today. Of course, we make everything today. Uh, it used to be, in the olden days, you would simply look for a nice piece of steel, an old saw or a piece of a car spring or whatever, and if you found the right piece of metal, you can tune it the way we're, I'm going to show you how to do it now. And you can use the scraper to scrape a piece of wood and leave a smooth surface much more easily than by trying to plane it. So today is all about scrapers. Just take a look at all the different kinds of scrapers there are. There, this is a plain cabinet scraper but they come in shapes because not everything you make is necessarily flat. They come concave, they come convex, they come big, they come small. Uh, some of them come in packages with instructions, which I find a little odd. And needless to say, at the end of the uh, last century, and the beginning of the last century, Stanley Tools actually invented a whole bunch of scrapers designed to fit in plane-like objects. These are all scraper blades. You don't really need any of those things. They're fun and they're good to have, but today I'm going to show you how well and how simple it is to make a scraper and to use it. You start off with a piece of metal. Let's take a piece of metal here. And what the first thing that you need to do is to make sure that the edge is perfectly flat. Now, once again, you can go to a store and you can buy all kinds of fancy jigs, but the easiest thing is simply to find a square piece of wood, cut a slot in it that will fit a file that's a little longer, and take the edge that you're going to make into a scraper and holding it flat on the surface of the wood, rub it backwards and forwards like this. What's the, what, what this is doing is actually making sure that the edge of the scraper is perfectly flat. However, this is molecular. And if I were to attempt to make a little edge that I would use for scraping here, the scratches left by the file would cause that edge to break off. So even though I now know that I have it perfectly straight, I need to make it perfectly smooth. Here's a trick for doing that. Here's a flat sharpening stone. I put a little water on it. And I can use the same little square piece of wood. And I hold the scraper on that so that it's perfectly upright. And I just do this for as long as it takes to remove all the marks left by the file. And you can see how much metal is coming off from the edge. And if you look really closely, you can see that that now is almost glass smooth, right? The next thing that I need to do is to make sure that not only is the edge perfectly flat and perfectly scratch free, but I got to make sure that both faces are perfectly flat. And to do that, I need a burnisher. It sounds like a fancy name. In the old days when uh, tools were a little better made, 
you could probably rely on any decent quality screwdriver to use as a burnisher. But nowadays, I wouldn't be so sure with plastic handle screwdrivers. But you can, in fact, buy burnishers that come in different shapes. Here's an oval one. Here's a round one that I like. They even make them triangular. And if you keep a little oil on here, that's what this is for. Just put a drop on that, like that. Spread it out. What I do now is to burnish both faces of the scraper. And I do that simply by holding the burnisher flat on the scraper and moving it backwards and forwards a few times. It doesn't take much pressure. It's not much more than spreading ice cream on your favorite piece of cake, but it's making the edge nice and smooth. I do that on one side, and then I do it on the other side. Same deal here. I haven't used this scraper for quite a while, so I can feel that it's rather uneven. You can even see little bits of rust here. But I do this, and what's happening is that I'm not only making the face, both faces of the scraper perfectly smooth, but I'm also pushing a little edge out. It's too small to feel, and in fact, if you did feel it, you'd run the risk of breaking it off. But believe me, if you could look under a microscope, you would see that now the edges of both faces have come out. All I have to do now to make this into a working scraper is to turn those edges over so that they produce a cutting edge. So the easiest way to do that is to put it in the vise. And then, taking my scraper, whichever one I want, I turn the edge. And I'll turn my face edge first. And I simply put this on and draw it along, pulling it back, and that will have turned the edge. Now I can do the other side. Same thing. And now I should have a scraper that will actually scrape. The trick, now at this stage of the game, you can feel it with your finger, but try and resist doing that. The trick now is to hold the scraper on the piece of wood that you want to scrape. Let's put the original piece back again. So you can see the difference between planing and scraping. You put this in. The trick is now to hold the scraper at the right angle. Remembering that the edge that you've turned is very, very small, the trick is to find the exact angle at which the scraper will work. That's why the Stanley inventions had adjustable pieces to adjust the angle, but this is still much more preferable. So I typically hold the scraper with my thumbs in the middle so that I can produce a slight round like that, and then trying to feel the edge, I scrape. And if I've done it right, you can see it produces shavings, actual shavings, not dust, but shavings. And the piece of wood that I've now scraped there's no tear out, or that if I kept going, there would be no tear out. It would be really smooth. As I said before, this is the simplest kind of scraper. And what I just showed you would make a little more sense if I did the same thing on all four sides. It's one of those things that's good to do first thing in the morning while you're still listening to the news. But that's all it takes. A nice piece of steel a perfectly flat, smooth edge, two perfect faces, and then with a burnisher, you produce a little edge, which, as you experiment to find the right angle, you can use to scrape the wood and produce the finest surface by making these beautiful little shavings.
There's a lot more about scrapers that we could talk about, but fortunately, in one of the books that I wrote, I actually have a whole chapter on scrapers. There's pictures of 300,000 year old scrapers. There's diagrams of other ways that you can prepare the blade. There's ways at which you hold it. It's worth reading the chapter and learning the book, which by the way, you can always find if you go directly to my website. So if you like that and you want to learn more ancient tricks for woodworking that don't involve noisy machines, be sure to press the subscribe button. And by all means, send me some comments, ask me some questions, and come back next time for another episode of Traditional Woodworking by Hand. Thanks for watching.